I am the 2013 National Teacher of the Year. The selection process is kind of a lot like the Miss America pageant in that you have the state teachers of the year that, that move on to the national level. So of course it was the swimsuit edition, uh, which is why I won. <laughs> But that's not what I'm here to, to talk about. So, so a lot of people ask, you know, so what do you teach? Well, I'm a chemistry, physics, and engineering teacher at Zilla High School. This is probably the only audience that didn't groan when I said that. <laughs> Most people instantly to their brains think, oh, man, those were the hard classes. Oh, those weren't for me. I, my, my brain's not big enough for something like that. And that's exactly why we're here today. That's the problem. You see, the hardest thing that I teach during the school day is not the Born-Haber process. It's not about taking an ion and, and turning it into a gas and then taking from a gas to ionization and figuring out the energetic ch changes that happen all the way through. That is not the most difficult thing I teach. The most difficult thing I teach is confidence. That is bar none the hardest thing that I do on a daily basis is giving students enough confidence to come into the classroom in the first place. You have to remember that these are people that we're educating. These are not students. When you call them students, you have this perception about them that they fold their hands, they're nice and neat, they want to learn, they're eager, and they just come in wanting to do anything that the teacher says. That's not who we teach. We teach people. They were just as bad as you were in high school. <laughs> yeah, that's scary, isn't it? Your sons and daughters, your grandchildren, they're just as bad as you were in school. Remember that. That's what we're up against. So I teach chemistry, physics, and engineering. I teach the hard classes, supposedly. Actually, it's a little bit more than that. I'm actually an adjunct faculty member at three different institutions, Central Washington University, Eastern Washington University, and Yakima Valley Community College. So every single course that I teach counts for dual credit college enrollment. I started asking my students what they wanted to learn about. My students wanted to learn about robotics. Having a vast background in biology, I said, sure. <laughs> so we went out, we bought some robotics kits, and we started playing with them. We started investigating. We started seeing what we can do with these things. We branched out and started something called the Zilla Robot Challenge. Went out with a bunch of parents, raised over $25,000, bought 100 of these robot kits, and now we send them out for free to any school in Washington State for absolutely no cost. That's any school, public, private, alternative, homeschool. If you're a kid, you should have access to STEM-related materials, no matter where you are. They keep these kits for six to eight weeks, and they come back on competition day, and we see who the biggest nerds in the state are. That's pretty cool. We have to ask questions that are not searchable in our classrooms. We used to ask questions that were about content. They were about, what is this? What is a nucleus? Now that's an interesting question if you're a biology teacher. What is a nucleus? A nucleus suddenly is this, about the center of the cell where the DNA is stored. Sometimes I would get that as an answer to my chemistry questions in what is a nucleus? Well, it's the positively charged center of an atom that contains protons and neutrons. Bing is getting smart enough to answer that question appropriately. I can't just ask them what the definitions of things are anymore. Instead, I need to ask them to make the stuff for me. I need to ask them questions that bring in all aspects of their learning. It is about art, it, it, is, it is about English, it is about social studies, and it's about science, technology, engineering, and math too. So we have to be able to develop these projects that bring in all of that information, because that's what I hear from businesses that they want. At least from what I'm understanding, and hopefully you can correct me if I'm wrong, they want someone that can look at the world, look at the problems that face that business, and solve them. Now, pretty much sum it all up. We just want people, people to be able to do. That's what this is about. So I need to be able to teach the unsearchable questions. I need to be able to teach the questions and, and, and solutions that can't be found on the internet. So how am I supposed to teach? What am I supposed to teach? It's got to be flexible, doesn't it? Over the next 10 years, let's imagine over the next 10 years what teaching should look like. And I really hope that the vision that you have of what teaching looks like over the next 10 years is different about every two years. Because about every two years, technology changes so much that we be, need to be able to adapt to it. So we need to have a flexible teaching plan. In other words, we need to have teachers that are doing the same thing that we're asking our students to do. We're asking our students to be flexible, to think on their feet. So we need to have teachers that do exactly the same thing. That's what the future of education looks like. 
We need to be able to have that flexibility so that regionally we can do things that matter. In Zilla, yeah, I'm going to talk about the wine industry. Because the wineries around my house, there's 11 of them within four miles. I need to be able to talk about that to my kids because many of my kids are actually putting the labels on the bottles. I'm not going to transport that lesson plan to urban Seattle. It's probably not going to resonate as well. I need to have that flexibility within the lessons to be able to do that. That's why I support next generation science standards. I'm a science teacher. It is not my job to help create the next generation of scientists. It's my job to help create the next generation. End of the story. Thank you so very much for the work that you are doing for Washington Science. Thank you. Thank you.